Okay, welcome everybody to uh, TikTok and Instagram Reels and how your business can use those to uh, market and promote yourself, especially during the upcoming holiday season where it's so critical um, to be out there and, and making sure people are aware of the great things that you're doing. Uh, with me today is a very special guest from one of our partner organizations, Travel Portland. Uh, her name is Carmen Paradise, and she's the social media manager at Travel Portland. And uh, welcome, Carmen. How are you? Hi, thanks so much for having me today. I'm excellent. How are all of you? <laughs> uh, we're doing great. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Yeah, I'm really happy to do so. Um, should I start my presentation? Yeah, I think, uh, go ahead. Okay, great. I'm just going to share my screen here, get this into presentation mode. Okay. So, yeah, like Jacob said, um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about TikTok. Um, can you guys see this bar where all these faces are? Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that's not in the way. So anyways, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Carmen Paradise. Um, like Jacob said, I'm the social media manager for Travel Portland, which means I manage um, our content creators. I manage the content that goes onto our pages. And I explore new platforms in the world of social media for, um, for us to uh, get, get busy on. And so um, TikTok was a big daunting monster for us for a while. And I'm really excited that over the last year, we went from zero followers to over 19,000 followers, or I think we're just about to hit 19,000 followers. So today I'm gonna to share with you some of the strategy that we used ourselves and some of the best practices that I've learned along the way that hopefully you can implement into your own business strategy. So first off, um, something that I just want to address right off the bat that local business owners ask us a lot is how can we get featured on your channels? I'm sure if you follow Travel TikTok or Travel Portland's TikTok or um, Instagram or Facebook, you'll see that we try to highlight as many different businesses as possible as much as we can. Um, but that being said, it's <laughs> impossible for us to feature everybody all the time. And so basically, um, our strategy behind supporting local businesses is that um, we're open for you guys to hit us up in our DMs um, and, and tag us in your feeds and use the tag or use the hashtags Travel Portland or Portland. <laughs> basically, what we're trying to do is you know we're active in our dms it'll either be myself or my um or my coworker jordan who is one of our um content managers um we're always answering questions in the dms and um trying to share as many things as we can to our stories or looking for scroll stopping imagery that we can share to our main page or um ideas of uh different businesses to cover through our TikTok and through our reels so please if you have something that you think is exciting to share don't hesitate to hit us up and um please be patient with us because we get a lot of dms about this so that being said we'll move on to talking about the real issue so first things first video is royalty i'll just leave it at that <laughs> um I'm sure if you haven't noticed, um, TikTok is kind of reigning supreme across um, all of the other platforms. They are the fastest growing social media platform that the world of social media has ever seen. Um, I attended a social media, uh, social media conference a couple years ago. And there, I mean, I knew that TikTok was the thing, but I, what I didn't know was that they are still in a very young stage of their social media platform. So it is not too late to get started there and to find success on that platform. But what I was really interested to find out is that 50% of its users are women over the age of 35. So um, I was really <laughs> excited to find this out because for the social media work that we do, these are the people that we're trying to speak to. And I was under the assumption that TikTok was just teenagers learning dances for each other. So it was very interesting to learn that that is not the case. Um, and that, you know, a majority of these users are people who aren't necessarily active in the I'm making videos and then I'm a creator kind of way, but more as a voyeur type of thing. But not necessarily as a voyeur because 
TikTok's main use is a as, as a search platform. And what I mean by this is it's a place where people, myself included, go to learn things. And that's actually what the app was designed for just across the board. And so people are going to this app to discover things, to figure out how to do things, to figure out what to do when they go to a city, what places to shop at that has things that they're interested in. And so by utilizing this app as the tool that it's meant to be as a business owner or as somebody who is trying to get somebody to come to Portland and hang out, we're, we're answering questions for people within this platform. And it's not necessarily just TikTok, it's also Reels. It's any video content that's out there. And we'll get more into that strategy later, but it's just very important to realize that this tool is here to help you as a business owner. And the more we can learn how to use the tools within the tool to your um, benefit, the better. And by that, I mean answering questions that your customers are asking with these videos, um, utilizing keywords and hashtags to be discoverable within the platform. Um, I think I've covered everything on this slide. Yep, totally. The average, I mean, people spend 33 minutes a day on Facebook or Instagram, but over like an upwards to an hour a day on TikTok. So you can see that this is really capturing people's attention and it's a place that you want to be. So bottom line is if you are not, if you are not yet prioritizing video content, now is the time to get started. I'm going to show you how. So um, at this conference that I went to, um, I had kind of this like aha moment. So like when we were first getting involved in TikTok, we were working with outside creators who we were like, okay, we're going to make these beautiful videos. We're going to spend all this money on production and lighting and hire actors and da, da, da. No, that's not what TikTok wants. TikTok wants authenticity. They want to see somebody real talking about a real thing that they can trust. Um, so that was kind of an aha moment for me, and I learned a lot about batch content creation, which we'll talk about later. But basically, it's as simple as taking your phone out of your pocket and making a video and then posting it to the platform. So the first video that went viral for us was 14 seconds long, and over two days, it got 1.4 million views. Hashtag humble brag. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, I'm just going to take matters into my own hands and try this. So I just recorded a video of the Benson bubbler. Talked a little bit about the Benson bubbler and I'll show you what it is because it was just really stupid and simple, but it went viral on our channel. Benson bubblers. Debuted in 1912. Can you hear that? Simon Benson reportedly hoped it would keep workers from drinking alcohol. 52 bubblers still run in Portland all year. Well, Benson. That, that's it. <laughs> so it was very easy. Um, it was very easy to edit within the within the platform. Um, their tools are very easy within TikTok and within Reels, but there are also other tools available, which we'll talk about later. But the basis of this is that we had no idea why this video went viral. But upon what I'm learning is that we we learned a lot from this in that people love really short content. People have very short attention spans. Um, this video also gained a lot of negative comments about, well, people just like love to pick on Portland as you might have <laughs> noticed, but <laughs> Any engagement is good engagement. Um, we had, at the beginning, we had 453 comments. Many of those were negative. But the funny thing is, is like people totally think that they're like hurting our feelings. We call them confused fans because they're actually driving a lot of engagement to our videos. Um, kind of a rule of TikTok and a rule of Reels is that you want to use those platforms as community engagement. And it's really important to... Um, respond to people's comments. But our rule of thumb is that if there's any sort of negative comment, we'll give it one response, if that. But beyond that, don't engage because people just kind of like to use that platform also to start an argument. And it's a lot of times just not worth any of our times. Um, and hopefully you won't have that with your business. <laughs> we have it with Travel Portland. And what are you going to do? Um, but this was also an aha moment for us that videos do not need to be long or overproduced. Oh. 
So I'm just going to give you kind of like a highlight of what our approach to content was. So when we were first getting into TikTok and we were working with those producers and then we switched over and then I was making all these videos and I was doing a lot of, you know, video editing and learning the platform. And as I was learning the platform, what I discovered is that there's a lot of people in Portland that are making videos about Portland. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, people that are learning about Travel Portland don't want to just see the Portland story through my eyes. They want to see the Portland story through the eyes of many. And there's so many creators out there that are telling these stories. And so what I decided to do is I decided to reach out to a handful of these people who are already making these stories and going into restaurants and going into businesses and talking about what they love about the city and um, approaching them to see if they wanted to make videos you know, with us and for us and for our channels. So our strategy became, um, and it took us a long time to figure out, you know, really fair way to do this, but we decided to start working with a group of five Portland creators and each of these creators create four videos for us a month. Um, we pay our creators a fair amount that they're all happy with. Um, our creators are not to accept free food or services or admission. And we do this because we want businesses to know, you know, that we, as a DMMO, a destination management and marketing organization, that we, part of our job is to support small businesses. So we want to make sure our creators are not getting anything for free because we want that money to be going to them. Um, but also, we feel that that's just incredibly important for creators to practice across the board. And I'll get into this in slides later as I talk about businesses working with creators. Like, don't don't ever feel like you need to give somebody anything for free. Um, creators will sometimes come across and, and mostly influencers do this like, oh, I'm doing you a huge favor by doing this. But it's not the case. <laughs> you should be um, paid for the services that you provide. Um, so anyways, we post their content to our channels and then we tag them on TikTok as the creator. And then on Instagram, we use the collaboration post tool so that the videos are showing up simultaneously on our wall as well as their wall. So we're kind of scratching each other's back in that way to where it's like we're our fans are being aware of them as a creator and then their fans are being aware of us as a page. Um, so our strategy is to work with five different creators for a three month span and then switch over and find new batches of creators to work with so that we're constantly showcasing Portland through the eyes of a lot of different creators. Um, the way that I think that this strategy can work in the ways to work as you guys as business owners is that um, it's really interesting to like reach out to these creators and invite them to do collaborative postings with you. And like I said, we'll touch more on that later. But I just wanted to kind of give you an example of some of the different creators that we're working with and some of the videos that we're making. And what I want you to take note of is that these are just regular people talking about things that they're interested in. There's nothing fancy or overproduced about any of these videos. It's coming from a very authentic place. And as somebody who is a TikTok watcher, as well as a creator, I know that this is what is engaging to me. I'm like, oh, I totally want to see what record stores to shop at. Good, family? Right? Let's go record Let's shopping. Go. First up, we have Mississippi Records. They have a great selection of new and used records, plenty of hip hop, R&B, soul, jazz, reggae, and ska. Definitely want to check them out. Next up, we got Music Millennium on Burnside. One of the largest stores in Portland they have a vast selection of new and used records. Very dope selection of hip hop. Tons of used CDs and DVDs. You can definitely be in here for hours. They got toys, collectibles, and memorabilia too. Can't forget about the second floor with the four fives and all the used records. Next, Future Shock. Future Shock is right down the street from Music Millennium. Very dope spot to find used hip hop and R&B records. Definitely one of my go-to spots. Always end up finding something dope in here. You can also find designer toys in here, such as Kid Robot and other vinyl figures. The shop has art and apparel as well. 
Last but not least, we had to save the best for last in the God of the Bino, located in Lottie and Zula's Sandwich Shop. This may be the smallest record store I've ever seen, but it's pretty dope. The upside to if you don't find anything at Inagata, you can always walk out with the sandwich. Holla. <laughs> so you'll notice that video is a minute long. Um, this video has garnered gar is, has gotten over a million views on our TikTok. And it's gotten a lot of people commenting, liking, and sharing on our reels. Um, when we see people like and share, we take that as a really great sign. We almost look at that more than we look at any other analytics because when people like and share, it shows that they they are having the intention of wanting to actually like visit that place. They're saying, hey, I'm gonna set this aside so that I can go check that out the next time I'm in Portland. Um, you'll also notice that it was very authentic. Um, it had a lot of great, um, a lot of great imagery, a lot of great information. It was showing the location of all the businesses, which is also really important. Um, I'll move on to Yvette's video. My name is Yvette. I'm a Portland creator, and today I'm taking y'all with me to a three for one special. Let's grab brunch at Mata and Baon Kainan Food Carts, located in Concourse Coffee's parking lot. This spot opened early this year and has quickly become one of my favorite coffee shops. Their branding is on point with the vintage basketball theme. It's such a cool space, and my favorite part is they use retro blazer cups. Their drinks are next level, seriously so good. From Baon Kainan, this is the chicken adobo. It melted in my mouth and was so flavorful. Presenting their fried breakfast potatoes, the spicy ketchup it came with was insane. From Mata, we got the mom's breakfast bowl. It truly felt like home cooking and made me want to order everything off their menu. And to finish off, we have the pandan donut. This was like eating a cloud. It was heavenly. Definitely check out all three spots and try everything you can, but thanks for coming with me. So um, a couple of takeaways from that video that I think are really important one you're creating fomo like who isn't hungry right now right <laughs> um two you're gonna you'll notice that as she was talking out loud the text of what she was saying was being displayed on screen um this is really important for a couple of reasons one for our hearing um our people that have a hard time hearing friends um that way they can you know see what's being <laughs> being said also, a lot of people scroll through TikTok and Reels on mute, and so this way um, you're engaging with these people um, on a different level. Um, also, you'll you know that totally looks real, totally looks handmade. People are gonna think it is authentic, and it is. Um, our last one is from Jenna Bikes, who is one of um, our creators, who's kind of a bigger influencer in town, and she focuses a lot on the bike culture of Portland. And this is her checking out the farmer's market. Let's go check out the Portland State Farmer's Market, one of my favorite activities to do every Saturday. The produce is incredibly fresh, so many vendors, one of the largest farmer's markets I've ever been to, absolutely stunning offerings. Hot Mama Salsa is not one to miss, best chips around, there's always a salsa of the week. I always pick up some goat cheese and meet the goats. How cute and so delicious. A milk is so good and they give out samples. I love to grab some fresh pesto. Scratch meat is so good. They have some of my favorite sausage. Always so many good gluten-free options. New Cascadia and Gabriel's have some great options. The market also has some food vendors at each end of the market. I love Money Bowl and I love to grab some flowers on my way out. Happy biking. So totally short to the point, beautiful imagery that's going to be scroll stopping. Um, one thing to note is that the average length time that people watch on Reels and TikTok is around six seconds. And so it's really important to put that imagery that is going to be scroll stopping, that is going to be the answer to somebody's questions right at the top of the video. That way, as people are scrolling through, they're like, oh, this is grabbing my attention. Oh, this is going to answer a question I have. And then put the rest of the content after that, after you've already captured somebody's attention. Um, okay, so here are some helpful tips from us to you. So here's just a really basic um, best practices rule. Brevity, the shorter the better. Like I said, that first six seconds is key. Even if you make a video that's 15 seconds long, if you make a video that's six seconds, um, 
it's totally fine as long as you're like getting the point across and feeding the algorithm. Um, cadence, the more the better. The algorithm of both TikTok and Reels love more content. The more content you can put out, the better. It doesn't matter how useful or glorious that content is. The more you're putting out, the more you're feeding the algorithm, the more your content is going to be showing up in other people's feeds. Um, I know I've said this a million times now, but viewers respond to what looks real and authentic. So this, I can't drive this point home hard enough. Do not be intimidated to make your own videos. You know, eight-year-olds are doing it and they're <laughs> going viral. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Trust me. Um, one thing that we did with our business that I realize not everybody has the opportunity to do, but we made um, a commercial account for our TikTok and we already had a commercial account for our Instagram and um, Facebook channels. And what this means is that you can um, put a budget behind these TikTok these TikTok posts, and you can use those posts that you're making as ads. And the really beneficial thing to this is if you're just starting out brand new on TikTok, this gives you a little bit of leverage to help gain followers and fans by kind of jumping the rules of the algorithm and getting that content pushed out to people. And the really great thing about that is that it allows you to tag based on people's interests and location. So if you're a business in Portland and you um, say you're a bookseller, so you want to um, get people's interests that are, you know, all about books and people that like to go shopping and support local makers. Those are all things that you can tag. And then on top of that, you can tag people that are within driving distance of your business. So you know that you're hitting the people that are going to resonate with the content that you're putting out there. Um, finally, structure. Your videos um, should be answering questions people are asking. And so, um, what, what I do at Travel Portland is I will go into any search platform across the board. I'll go into Google. I'll type in, what should I blah, 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 Portland. And I'll let the answers kind of be the questions that I'm gonna answer. So a lot of times people are like, what should I do on a weekend in Portland? So I'll bring this question to my creators and be like, hey, people wanna know what they should be doing. Let's make a video about this. Or people are like, what are the best gluten-free places in Portland? So then we make a video about it. So we're answering the questions that people are asking. Um, as a business owner, and a little bit about me, I was also a business owner in a past life of mine. Um, this was before we had the interweb, and I'm just joking, it was before TikTok and stuff like that. But um, I know as a business owner, people would have these questions that they would ask over and over again. Even if it's something as simple as what are your hours? <laughs> what are the days that you're least busy where I can come in and grab brunch? Um, what, what are the new products that you have in store? So like, think about these questions as a business owner and, um, and answer those questions. It could be a 15 second video where you're like, hey, we're located here and here and we're open Monday through Friday, nine to four. The other thing to keep in mind is that each post you do is this little blip in the radar. So don't worry about um, doing content more than one time. It's very likely that people will never take note <laughs> of that. So you can do multiple posts about the same thing. And unless people are like living on your page and watching every single video you make, they're never going to notice. But the more content you put out there, the better and the more likely you are to be reaching new ears and new eyes. So just don't be afraid of doing not necessarily duplicate content, but answering the same question in a lot of different ways. Um, so hashtags, it's really important on both TikTok and on Instagram and Reels to be utilizing these hashtags because these hashtags are a way that people search for information. Like I was talking about how people are using these platforms as search um, so, you know, as a business owner, think about what, what kind of things people search for that are relevant to your business and look at what hashtags are available. Um, start on the simple side. So again, like if you're a bookseller, look at what hashtags are kind of being popular in Portland around that topic. So one thing you could do is just start as 
bookstore Portland. And it will show you how many people are following that hashtag. And then you could be like, okay, let's try bookstore PDX. And then again, you'll see how many people are following. So include as many of those types of hashtags in your post, and that will help you become more discoverable to people who maybe don't know that you're a thing. Um, for audio, leveraging trending songs if appropriate, right? So um, a big thing with TikTok and what Reels is trying to emulate is um, using like trending sounds and trending songs will help you get further up in the algorithm feed. And so I realize this sounds weird if you've like never used the platform, but if you're on the platform, as you're creating the video, it will give you an option to add sound and it'll take you to a menu. And the first thing in the menu will say trending sounds. And so you can kind of go through and like listen to those and see sometimes creators even create content around a trending sound. Like they'll make their video specific to that sound so that they can kind of jump on this um, bandwagon of, you know, being discovered through those sounds. Um, and if this doesn't make sense, feel free to ask me about it later. I'll go into more detail. Um, if you have a commercial account, one thing to take note of is that if you're using these posts as ads for your business, those commercial, those trending songs and sounds may not be available to you. And don't be discouraged by that because the um, power of like money that you're putting behind those posts will suffice for the lack of a trending sound that you have, but you'll still have sounds that are available um, that are non-commercial sounds that, so you'll still have like background music for your video, which is important because people like that when they have the sound up. Um, I talked a little bit about subtitles before. Um, you really want to leverage and use these native talk track generators. Um, and also there's a, there's a fun little tool in there to where if you don't want to do your own voiceover, you can have voiceover created for you that will also have um, the talk track going. So basically you type in what you want to say, and then there's like this funny fake computer voice that comes and does the talking for you, which I used a lot in the beginning of my TikTok creation because I certainly didn't want people to hear this voice <laughs> over their videos. I was a little shy. Um, and then last but not least, attribution. If you're sharing someone else's work, always provide credit in the caption and via tagging. And this is really important when you're working with creators. You definitely want people to be, feel valued and seen for their work. Um, a lot of the things that we do on Instagram is called UGC, which is user generated content. In fact, that's pretty much all we do. And that means that we're looking and sourcing out photos that other people have posted. So you'll notice on every single one of our posts, we have a photo credit or we tag a business of where we got that from. And that's just um, common courtesy on social media. Okay, so now we're going to talk about batch content creation, which for me was totally game changing and mind blowing. So I learned about batch content creation at the last social media conference that I was at, and it really like changed the whole playing field for me and took the idea of getting on TikTok and creating maybe five videos a, a week from something that seemed really scary and not doable to something that seemed like, oh, I can totally do this. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. So I know that we've talked a lot about um, how videos do not have to be overproduced. They don't have to be five minutes long. They can be whatever they want, just as long as you're filling this little monster that's the algorithm of videos day to day, we're going to be getting somewhere and making some progress. So batch content creation essentially is getting your phone out walking around your store, making some videos of the products you have, maybe, maybe going outside, showing your street view, um, basically getting like, I don't know, 15 minutes worth of video content. And then once you get this video content, what you're going to do is you're going to go into one of your editors. Maybe you're going to go into your phone initially and just break it up into little chunks, or maybe you'll use an outside app like CapCut, which we'll talk about later, which is a video editing app that a lot of TikTok and real content creators use. It's a really, really easy app to um, edit videos within your phone. 
There's also Premiere Rush that's super easy to use. But basically, you're going to take <clears throat> this longer form video that you've captured, and you're going to break it down into little bite sized moments. So these bite sized clips can be anywhere between, you know, 10 to 60 seconds, really, however long it takes. You can um, clip little pieces together, and it's really fun, like once you get going with it. But basically, the whole point of this is that you're spending 15 minutes gathering video content that will then be broken down into chunks that will fill up two weeks worth of posting. So hopefully this makes sense to you. So I just want to um, play this video over here, which Jordan and I thought were so thought was so funny, and it just really shows like how easy it can be to make a video and go viral. So this video says, you're watching a TikTok that I created in less than a minute using a clip from six months ago, using the new trending lazy TikTok sound because I didn't feel like posting something today. And yes, this is part of my content strategy. So it's basically her just sitting there working. This video went viral like crazy. It has like 4 million views. This is how easy it is to like make content. It's like you can literally put anything up there and as long as it's slightly relative to the business that you have and what you're doing. And also the less seriously you take yourself generally, the better people. And that goes along with, with the authenticity rule. Like people want to see you having fun and being creative. So don't be afraid to like, I don't know, pick up something in your store and just like really zoom in on it and be like, oh my God, look at how cute and cool this is. Like you could totally have this in your window check it out. Like it, they just want to see you being you. They want to see your business being itself. So um, anyways, the cool thing about TikTok is that I know for a fact that as a business owner, I did not have a lot of time to devote day to day to go on and say, okay, I got to make this video. Oh my God, it's going to take an hour. I got to edit it. I got to upload it, blah, blah, blah. Cool thing about TikTok is you can, and really with social media in general, Set aside a day in your week that you're going to say, okay, I'm going to have two hours in this day to dedicate to my business on social media. With, um, with different tools um, that are like uh, scheduling tools, you can do this. But specifically with TikTok, you can go into the app and upload as many videos as you want and save them in draft mode. And so what this means is you're uploading, you're putting in the music you want to put in, you're putting in the copy you want to put in with the keywords that are relevant to the post, you're adding in your hashtags, then you're saving it to draft. And you can do this with like 10 videos, right? So you have 10 videos saved in your draft world. The next day you go into TikTok and you say, okay, I'm going to publish this one today. Boop, publish, two seconds. Next day, okay, got another one, publish, two seconds. So that means you're spending like two hours at the beginning of the week, but then day to day, it's only a couple seconds work to get relevant, feed the algorithm, make sure you're posting every day. I hope that makes sense. Um, you can do this with your other channels with free tools like um, Later or Hootsuite or other scheduling tools to where you can kind of decide what you're gonna post every day, schedule it out in one day, boom, let it alone, the tool schedules it for you. Sorry, I hope I'm not talking too fast. I get really excited about this stuff. Um, okay, so speaking of scheduling out your posts, um, this is a content creator or a content calendar. This is an example of the content calendar that I created and use for Travel Portland. We use a tool called Airtable to make this, but honestly, you can use any calendar. Um, I used a Google calendar for a really long time. And basically, this is just how I stay organized about my social media posting. So basically, how I schedule out our world in Travel Portland is the first thing we'll do is we'll pinpoint monthly themes and key dates to inspire content. Because it's really, I know that it can be really challenging to figure out what to post about on a day-to-day -day basis. And like I said, don't be afraid of posting kind of the same thing over and over again because we are just these little blips in this huge world of social media and literally like nobody's going to notice and it's totally fine but it is fun to pick out themes and key dates to have some inspiration as to like what to post about 
So, you know, for November, obviously November, we're getting into our cozy season. And so we're starting to think about things that are cozy and talk about, um, talk about different happenings or different places to go that are relevant to that theme. Um, also, you know, key dates. There's a whole world of social media, um, like specific holidays, like National Dog Day or National Donut Day or National Let's Look Up at the Sky Day. Like they have a holiday literally for everything. Um, and those are really great ways to inspire content that can be made relevant to your business or your channel. Even if you're not a donut seller, you can be like, our favorite donut shop that's closest to us is this place. And when you come visit us, you should come visit them too. And then you have the opportunity to tag them, which helps you be seen from their channel and then be seen through the, your channel and vice versa. So it helps you get more eyes on your view. Um, so anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, but those are really great ways to um, get inspired as to what to post about. Um, you also want to identify content pillars you'll post about consistently. And so what we do is we try to say, okay, we want to post about food once a week. We want to post about a park once a week. We want to post about this once a week, this once a week. So the pillars can be different for everybody. So within your business, maybe discover four or five pillars that you want to regularly hit on every week. And this will also help um, get inspired to create different types of content. Um, another thing we do is we look for relevant content to share. Um, that's always a nice thing to do, um, especially like on Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can also share on TikTok. You can repost other people's content to come through your channel, which is kind of a new feature that they've been doing. So that's fun to play around with. Um, it's really important to um, capture scroll stopping visuals. Like, like I said before, like you want people to stop their scroll. You want their thumb to pause and look at what you're doing. So keep aware of that when you're putting out content or when you're creating content. Um, we tend to plan a week out so that you can schedule in one sitting. Like I said, using those platforms that you can um, just kind of sit, put all your posts in, say, I want it on this day to go out at this time, this day at this time, and then just set it and leave it, walk away. And then, like I said, leverage scheduling tools to stay organized. So like I said, we'll be sharing this deck with you and these are all active links. So you can kind of see the best practices that other businesses do um, that we've really been admiring as far as like their video content goes and their organic still content. These guys are just all doing a great job. So as you get this deck, be sure to check this out. Um, so how to vet creators, and I don't know how much you guys will be interested in this, and if you are, we can definitely go into it more, but I for sure want to leave time for questioning, so I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly. But, you know, there's a differences between creators and influencers. Um, influencers are people who have like very, very high numbers of followers that expect to get paid a lot of money for the, for the content that they create around your business. Um, Working with influencers can be a really great thing, but in my opinion, it's not a great way to jump into the market of working with creators because it can be very steep and, and a little difficult to navigate. Creators are people who just naturally are creating for fun and who are not looking to make a business out of what they're doing. And so the creators that we work with tend to have between 500 and, you know, like 10,000 followers. Um, and they're people who are creating locally and who are really excited about the content that they're putting on their channels and they're excited to talk about what's happening in Portland. So here's a few ways to figure out how to engage with people, specifically influencers who are going to be charging you for the work that they do. Um, before you pay anyone any money, definitely audit their cha channel for authentic engagement. Um, this means that you want to see that they're not getting paid to do like everything to where people don't trust their opinions, if that makes sense. Um, you want to take note of who they've collaborated with in the past and how those pieces of content performed. So take note of how many people viewed them, how many likes they received, how many comments they received, look at their comments, make sure that they're authentic and engaging. And then it's never a bad idea to just request a media kit. 
and that will show you um, all of their analytics and they should be happy to share that with you. So here's some um, social media tools that you'll be able to access later. These are tools that I've worked with that I vouch for um, and they're just great. So scheduling tools, like I was saying, like that helps you just sit down in one sitting, schedule out your post for the week, the month, whatever, so that you can set it, forget it, walk away. Um, video tools, these are our editing tools. And then last but not least, our copy editing tool that we love Grammarly. Everybody likes good grammar on their posts and this is just one that's really easy to work with. Um, so with that being said, thank you for attending my TikTok today. And uh, it's been great. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much. I really um, appreciate <laughs> how you uh, shared some examples because it's super helpful. A lot of people just don't know where to begin. And it's great to know that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything special. You're just trying to create something that'll grab somebody's attention and uh, just quick and quick and easy. I think, which is, you know, good news for a lot of small business owners who don't have a ton of time to dedicate to something like this. Um, if anybody has questions, please drop them into the chat or raise your hand. Uh, I was wondering, um, what's the, the best way to drive traffic to like a website uh, using a TikTok video? Is there a way to embed a link or are you just trying to tell people to like, hey, go to check out the link in my profile or what's the best way to do that? That's a great question. So um, I just want to say first off, that these uh, these platforms generally don't want you to drive traffic away from their platform so it's essential to be kind of a little sneaky about how you're doing that one of my favorites is um a blink and lio they're they're looking for people who are saying check out the link in my bio so a lot of creators are saying check out the blink in my lio as a way to kind of get around that um but also it's cool to put a um there is a place where you can put a uh website in the in the plate in your um what is it called your home page in your bio area also you could put a link tree in that bio area which is a um website that will then house many links for you and so you can often reference like check out the link in my bio for our website or for whatever you can find there but awesome. on reels and tiktok you can't embed links like you can in stories good to know yeah that's that makes sense too so some, sometimes you have to get a little creative with that um dana asked is there a demographic difference between instagram reels and TikTok? are there different audiences for those two platforms that you've noticed or you know it's really funny because and i don't know if this has to do with our followers specifically but i'm seeing a very similar demographic with between um instagram and and TikTok, which is like I said, like the majority of the people that we're finding and we're resonating with are women over the age of 45 or 35. Um, so yeah, we're seeing it's very similar platform to platform, which was very surprising for me. Cause like I said, I thought TikTok was all young people dancing. And turns out it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really great uh, statistic to know that um 50% are women over 35. That's I think a key demographic for a lot of small businesses. So um, yeah, the, the platform seems like it's really grown a lot uh, since it you know first kind of came out. Um, so uh, uh, Sarah asks, um, my business association doesn't use TikTok. Do you advise the same strategies with Instagram Reels or are there any strategies specific to, to Instagram Reels that are different than the ones you covered when you talked about TikTok? Well, um, I, yeah, I would advise the same strategies with Instagram Reels. And one thing that I forgot to take note or to mention before is that we repurpose all of our video content on multiple channels. And so when we make a TikTok, we're also putting that TikTok on Reels. We're putting it on YouTube short. We're putting it on Pinterest. So what's really great about this is that when you're making one piece of video content, you're making multiple pieces of video content because you're able to post that everywhere. So I hope that answers your question, Sarah. So just because they aren't on TikTok, if they are already on Instagram, it's really super simple to repurpose the content that they're creating for Instagram yes. and possibly reach a whole different audience. Absolutely. And also, you know, the rules that we're talking about when we talk about TikTok, 
video strategy, those rules do apply to any short form um, video you're going to put on any channel. Awesome. Good to know. Um, let's see. So uh, Shannon asks, I've read that uh, TikTok does not lead to purchases. Um, so brands looking to sell as a component of their content. Um, would you agree that Instagram has a better platform if you're trying to sell something or uh, if you're a retailer? I guess um, I would I would ask if you're trying to sell within app. Um, I can't really speak to that with the knowledge that I have, but I know that um, video content, whether it's TikTok or Reels, is very important for brand awareness and awareness leads to in-person sales. Um, I would have to do some more research around sales straight from the platforms. Although I do see a lot of people like and a lot of lists out there that are like, TikTok made me buy this. And so like, there's a lot of commercial accounts out there that are utilizing TikTok as a selling platform. But um, I think that you'd if you want to be selling your brand directly through TikTok or directly through Reels, you will want to create a commercial account and dig into specific targeting, whether it's demographic, geographical, or key interest, and, and definitely lean heavy into that aspect. And there's also different ways you can set up your commercial campaigns to be designed and targeted specifically to people who are making purchases on those apps. Yeah, that's that's good to know. I think there's yeah a whole kind of specific demographic of people who shop on um, those apps. So being able to target to them, um, I think, is is a huge advantage. But um, that would get into some of those paid ad campaigns that you you referenced. Yeah, which I'd be happy to do a whole other presentation about that because whoo, that's the whole other dark side. Of the yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's probably pretty <laughs> complex as far as the number of things you can do and the options you have there. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Jeff asked, uh, he's curious about the process uh, for putting a reel together. So once you have a video or videos recorded, is the editing process self-explanatory as far as like putting in captions and narration? Um, do you need to have an editing app or can you do that all within TikTok? You can definitely do it all within TikTok or all within reels. Um, so basically the walk down of how it works and, you know, feel free to play around with it, like within your own personal thing. That's definitely how I got good at it. But basically what it does is when you start to do a reel, it'll let you access your camera and it'll allow you to upload as many um, videos or photographs or whatever as you want. And so once you've uploaded those things, then you can go from clip to clip and use like little snip tools and edit it down. Once you get things edited down to a place that you want, then you can go through and it will give you an option to do a voiceover. And then once you do the voiceover, it gives you an option to do voice to text. Um, it also gives you the option for sound. One of the reasons I like using an outside editing tool is because TikTok and Reels can also be really buggy. And the longer you're there in the editing process, the more you're opening up <laughs> a possibility of bugginess to happen and for it to just shut down on you and then you lose all your work and that's very frustrating. So I really like using CapCut and Reels because it gives you an opportunity to have this app within your phone that is not gonna shut down on you, that you'll be able to do all this editing. And it's also as easy as doing it in Reels. And they also, CapCut also provides you all these different sounds to use and different graphics and, and font types and stuff, and it's free. And then you, once you finish the video there, you can then download that to your phone and then upload it directly to TikTok and not have to do anything in the TikTok platform. So it sounds pretty user friendly. You don't need a film degree to uh, to use it. It's really uh, uh, just you know cut and paste type of thing. Totally. Yep. Cool. Um, another question uh, around um, takeovers. Does Travel Portland ever uh, engage with uh, other businesses or creators to do takeovers? Uh, do, you, do you have anything to share about that? Yeah, we've definitely done takeovers in the past. And for people that don't know, takeovers is when 
you give somebody your login information for your business and they have control over your social media platform for the day. And so it's a really fun thing to do with different um, like creators and celebrities and to say like, like for Travel Portland, for example, we'd give somebody a takeover opportunity to where they're like, hey, I'm such and such and I'm, this is how I'm going to send my day in Portland and da, da, da. And it just kind of like opens up to new audiences. Takeovers, with that being said, are kind of becoming a thing of the past with the invention of the collaboration tool. The collaboration is kind of the new takeover. And that's really nice because then you don't have to share your your um, password or something with somebody that you don't know. And instead, you're collaborating. So you're sharing content, whether it's video content or um, you know, just a picture, like still imagery, to both channels at once. And so this is becoming kind of the new takeover. Um, with TikTok, we're not really like seeing a lot of takeover activity. We're seeing more um, the reposting to where people are reposting businesses they love to their own channel in ways to kind of um, do like shout outs to different people but the takeover thing it hasn't really been a thing maybe the new takeover thing on tiktok is doing the um what do they call it when it's a split screen and there's two people on there at once so that's kind of a, a way that you can do it um but it's not like the takeover that we're used to seeing in instagram and that makes sense thank you for that uh we just have a couple minutes left i um uh, just uh, want to just remind everybody that we uh, we're going to wrap up shortly. But um, Carmen, you have a, a time for one or two more questions? Yeah, I have all the time you need. Awesome. Um, there's a question around YouTube, and and is YouTube good for repurposing the video content that you're creating for these channels, or is that yeah. more for longer form? Uh, does Travel Portland use YouTube at all? Yeah. So um, like I, 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 I don't know if I said this out loud, but pretty much every uh, social media app is trying to be Instagram. So everybody's kind of like opening up a platform for these short form videos. And YouTube is certainly no different. YouTube has a um, within their mobile app, they have something called YouTube Shorts, which is essentially a TikTok for YouTube. So yes, there is a place on that. We at Travel Portland haven't been exploring that as much as we want to simply because our our strategy for YouTube isn't really in alignment with the short video form so we're figuring out how how that will work in our world but it is certainly a thing and it is certainly a thing that people are going viral on YouTube for and I would definitely suggest using that as a platform but just keep in mind it is only a mobile app um function okay Good to know. Any other last minute questions before we wrap up for the day? Uh, I would just want to remind everybody that Travel Portland does a ton of awesome programs and they're a great resource for small businesses in Portland. So if you're not a Travel Portland member or you're looking to engage with the organization, definitely check them out at travelportland.com. Is that right? Com? Yep, travelportland.com. Okay. And keep in mind too that our membership is 100% free and we offer so many great benefits to businesses like seriously i couldn't say enough like we are here to help all of you guys so um please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us whether it's social media needs or community engagement needs like we we're just here for you guys so we're happy to help always awesome thanks so much for being here carmen we really appreciate you taking the time and uh yeah i'll follow up with everybody uh with some more info uh shortly so thanks for being here and have a great rest of your day well, thank you so much. It was great to spend time with all of you, and I hope that you had a great time. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye.